One of the reasons I came here to volunteer was a fear of death. And it, it wasn't that I was afraid I was going to die or anything like that. It was just that not knowing how to deal with it and feeling so incompetent and just scared to say or do the wrong thing. And I would just avoid it at all costs. If, if someone told me their uncle passed or their grandmother passed, I would just like get out of there as quick as I could because I, I was afraid to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing or compound the situation and make it worse. So there was a definite fear for me about the whole subject of death. And um, one of the reasons I came here to volunteer was because I like to challenge myself and I like to face my fears. And I thought, where better than where it's all about, you know, death and the dignity of dying. And it's been, and it sounds cliche to say it, but very life-changing for me because I'm no longer afraid of it. She really tries to be a good friend. I mean, not just, like I said, not just an acquaintance, but a friend. I like the spunky ones for some reason. I mean, everybody knows that they're here. It's the last phase of their life. Very few of them just kind of come here just to give up and die. They all know that it's the end stage, but there's very there's a few that will pop out in your head that they were ready to go, but they wanted to go on their own terms. So those are probably the ones that stick out more than others. It depends on who you talk to. Yeah. <laughs> some say, uh, Six to eight months, but um, it could be longer, it could be shorter. My wife has given me orders not to uh, succumb to it, so uh -huh. I'm kind of stuck. <laughs> we see people here, probably founders of corporations down to, you know, someone that was possibly homeless. Um, where you were in your, your life prior to this, it becomes so insignificant, you know, at this stage of your life, what you did for a living, how much money you made, what car you drove, it just doesn't matter anymore. Um, the priority is to live to the fullest every day that you have. And when you're faced with your mortality, all those things just kind of fall away. I have actually brought my daughter here, um, my 11-year-old, she loves coming here. There was one case with a gentleman that was 104 years old and they struck up a conversation and you know of course I was listening to it and he had shared with her he only had one daughter, his wife had gone already, he had one daughter and no grandchildren and she just looked at him and she said, I'll be your granddaughter. So I, I just was like, wow. And several weeks later he passed and she wasn't here. And I went home and I told her, I said, I have to tell you something about, you know, this gentleman. She goes, oh, I know he, he died. And I said, how did you know that? And she said, oh, he told me he was going to die and he didn't want me to be sad. And I just, oh, but yeah. I feel more comfortable with her than with anyone else uh -huh. around here. Uh -huh. Tell her stories about my life, uh -huh. which she thoroughly enjoys, I think. <laughs> Things that aren't part of her job description, she goes above and beyond. Uh -huh. We had a resident come in and he wanted to eat butterscotch pudding and could not understand why we didn't stock butterscotch pudding. It should be a simple, you know, solution to him. So I got in my car and went to Publix and bought him some butterscotch pudding. And you would think I gave him the moon. He was so happy to eat that butterscotch pudding. And he passed two to three days later, I can't remember exactly. But, and it was sad that he left, but at the same time, for me, he got his butterscotch pudding, so it was a good thing. It wasn't for me to focus on the fact that he died. It was the fact that we were able to make him happy prior to that, to give him, you know, something as simple as butterscotch pudding, put a smile on his face like Christmas morning. <laughs>